Hi, I was going to bring down the actors if they're here and the producers and Santos and Mike G. Where are you guys? of me on set that she does such a good one. Hi, my name is uh, Roberto Sanchez. I play Francisco. Hi, I'm Mike. I was the uh, cinematographer. Yeah. Hi, I'm Trinity Shi. I'm one of the producers. Hi, I'm Alex Dialakis. I'm also one of the producers. Apparently, I'm Santos de Santos, and I'm the editor. <laughs> I'm uh, Fred Thorpe, I was one of the producers. I'm Otsko Kotska, I co-wrote it and produced it. Eloy Mendez, I play Adria. Joanne Trujillo, I play Cecilia. here do you want to talk about your casting process <laughs> yeah I think we saw like 60 kids um, after my uh, casting director had like sorted through the other ones um, and Johanna was the only one who came in and totally freaked all of us out um, she took this really long pause in between everything for like a minute and we thought that she was like zoning out that she was just getting into it um, and we were just very impressed so yeah and this is your first movie kind of yeah. <laughs> what did she do to freak you out? Well, I was making them all improv, like to tell a sad story in Spanish. And all the other kids would come in and be like, okay, like right now, you just want me to tell you a story. And when Johanna came in, I said, tell us a sad story. And she went like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> but she told this beautiful story. What was it about? I don't remember. Do you? This little girl. Well, perfect. <laughs> Interesting. And? And Roberto, I mean, this is the third film I've made with Roberto, where the other two films, he's been kind of a side character in it, so this is his first time as the lead uh, working with me. All right. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the other character in this film, which is? Like Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> we have, we have somebody like from Lake Los person. Angeles? Yes, I'm so sorry. I'm sure you had you in it. Do you want to talk a little bit about Lake Los Angeles, the place, and um, in, what about it inspired you to make? this the location where you're going to make this movie? Well, it's a place I knew about for a long time from doing Little Rock and Third Awesome Highway. It was a place we were always passing through, and I think we shot some stuff up there for both of those films. Um, and this is a really interesting story in the 60s where they try to make it this town for people to move, and they thought they were going to make it this kind of resort-esque kind of place, and they built this fake lake, and then it dried up in a couple years, and now it's nothing but like meth heads and people who want to be left alone. Um, but I think it's interesting because I think it's a place where people like dreams come to die in this way. Like it was this place, all these hopes and dreams, and now it's gone completely. <laughs> but I like it a lot. So it's like, <laughs> it's like Los Angeles in general that way. A place where dreams come to die. 
Do we have questions out here? Do you want to start here? We built that from scratch. To, to have that check. Um, no, I mean, I mean, what's great about out there is there's all this insane production value and all these things that are like beautiful and old, and you don't really have to do anything. I don't think we. We have a set designer. Yeah, Ming Jung, where are you? Uh, Ming Jung, where are you? Come down here. Come down, Ming Jung. I know you're here somewhere. So Ming, Ming Jung did did a lot of work. I think inside the house, she she sculpted things. But. <laughs> this is Ming Jung. I mean, my other two films, like the characters in the films are based on kind of their real persona. And since I knew I was going to use Roberto, it was going to be Cuban, I guess, um, since he's Cuban. And uh, the rest of the story, I, I teach the summer school program at CalArts, and I have this student who made a movie about himself coming over the border and being stuck in a drop house. And I found it to be this thing I didn't know that much about and kind of terrifying and interesting. So that was kind of the beginning of the idea. And I think the reason there's no dialogue is because they're both wandering around alone, so they have no other time to talk to each other. So the, the character is Cuban because the actor is Cuban, but the whole time I was wondering how, how did a Cuban end up so far west? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I wondered the same thing. <laughs> they do exist out here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was kind of based on Roberto and me try to incorporate some of his story into it. Yeah, back in the back. Me? Yeah. I have a question from my God. Do you speak Spanish fluently? And if you don't, how do you navigate this as a story as a director? My Espanol is más o menos. Uh, muy mal. Uh, we, we, we would rehearse all the scenes in English, and then, um, then they would do it in Spanish, and then I would trust that they said everything they were supposed to say. <laughs> Our editors speak Spanish. Yeah, luckily. <laughs> Was there a part two? Uh, part two? I'm trying to get out of the desert, but. <laughs> part two is when uh, Cecilia and Francisco were in the holding house together. <laughs> <laughs> it's the return of Panchito. <laughs> Okay, yes, yes for, for the two mics. What were some of the technical and artistic considerations you both made uh, on the way you wanted look, the film to look? Mike, you want to put it that way? You want Mike? No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him later. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually Mike's dad asking the question. So. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, Mike and I have just a very similar aesthetic in <coughs> films that we like. and. Um, once we started working together, we just developed this weird code talk where we don't really talk about anything, but we just grunt and point and somehow <laughs> we figure it out. Is that about right? <laughs> did you find that cactus and shoot it, or did you have to put that cactus out there and shoot it? We actually found a different cactus that we wanted to use. I had this really great design, but it had too many branches. so. Mike and I drove out there one night, and we went to Home Depot and bought all these chains to like hook it up and rip pieces off, um, which I guess is like a federal offense. So <laughs> we ripped off like three of them, and it still wasn't enough, and so we quit and we found another tree. <laughs> Mutilating a cactus is a federal offense. I think so. I would assume. Supposedly we did all this. This didn't actually happen. Yeah. 
Um, I think uh, I think most of you guys have seen something of that. <laughs> yeah, Fred. I mean, Fred has worked in every film with me. Osco, um, Mike shot the last one. Um, I mean, we had a very small crew, so it was very intimate, and I think um, that helped kind of figuring it out. But I didn't force them to watch any of my work. I wouldn't do that to them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I wrote another script that unfortunately takes place out in Mojave. Out in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> um, Some did. I know. <laughs> so I'm just finishing that. Uh, but it has, I think it has a ways to go, so we're working on that. And then me and my casting director, Nicole Arbusto, are going to do this kind of uh, actor, non actor thing where we go out in the middle of nowhere and do casting sessions and try to find the weirdest people we can find and then make a movie with them somehow. Um, where they're, when they audition, they're gonna do scenes from their favorite movie. So I'm hoping to get, you know, like some 70 year old trucker who's doing a scene from Iron Man 3 or something. <laughs> um, and then juxtaposing their lives, like who they are in real life and who they wanna be in cinema. So it's just kind of something like that. It sounds terrible, I know. <laughs> when I saw this movie, um, it made me think of City of Quartz. Have you read City of Quartz? The whole beginning of the book is about uh, Lano Del Rio, which was. Um, a commune out in Antelope Valley, and you can still see parts of it. The ruins are still up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen it out there before? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> here. He was taking her to Magic Mountain, actually. So. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I was. We were thinking that he was up to something shady outside of this oh, but circle. Oh, you never know what they're dating next to. What do you What do you think? It was just <laughs> utter confusion. <laughs> Optimistic person I have ever met in my life. We have one one last question here, yeah. Well, Mike, I would just trust Mike all the time on what he wanted to shoot, but you know, he's very particular. And so, um, I don't know, we only had this window of opportunity between what it was at like 5.30 and something. Yeah, so we did, we had a 24 day shoot, which was split up in halves. So we did seven days in January and then 18 days in, in April. The entire trilogy is shot at that trailer. What were the temperatures in January? Terrible. I mean, it was the worst because the sun's out, but it's freezing cold, and Viajito there at the end uh, would do nothing but complain about how cold it was all the time. <laughs> Cuban, Cuban style. So, Mike, you're taking this film to a few festivals, and hopefully we're going to be able to see it distributed somewhere some, and sometime in the future. I hope so, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for making such a gorgeous film. Thank you. Thank you. you have something else that you want to say? Well, we have posters from posters that will be down here front. If you want to grab one, um, we're going to go across the street to the Hotel Figueroa for drinks. If you want to join us. Um, uh, you have a question? That was just a total freak thing. He showed up and he was telling that story. Um, is Bruno Reyes here? Is Bruno here? No. 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 Okay. Robert Huerta? Robert. Oh, Robert. Yeah, Robert. Come on down here, Robert. Um, 
So he started telling that story, and Robert and Roberto knew what he was saying, and they were like, you should really hear this fucking guy's story. We should make this a scene. So it just kind of happened on the fly, and it got incorporated into the film, and just happened that his story was kind of mirrored the story of the film, um, which once I it was translated, I realized like how beautiful his story was. Um, and then, I guess lastly, I just want to say, Johan, I am so proud of you. <laughs> Come on down. Hey,